Hi, today I will show you how I built the body of my ambient LED ping pong display. Of course I'm not the first one lighting up ping pong balls with LEDs. In fact, one can find dozens of similar projects online. But I got inspired by the YouTuber BitLooney. In the spring this year, he published a video about a big LED matrix consisting of hundreds of ping pong balls. I found the footage quite amazing and decided to build my own version of it. Even before I began my project, BitLooney managed to build an even bigger ping pong LED wall. This big display could not only show pre-programmed animations, but also stream data from other devices like mobile phones or cameras. And I thought the same as BitLooney. It's quite nice. To start off my project, I jumped right into my most favorite 3D modeling software, which is Fusion 360, and designed my own version. The result was a nearly 80 cm wide hexagon with exactly 331 LEDs in a hexagonal pattern. I decided to arrange them like this because it leads to a higher pixel density in the end. The plywood top is supported by aluminum profiles around the edges. There would be enough space underneath the body to house all the LEDs and connecting cables. Because I just own a simple wise in a tiny cellar, I decided to make use of the possibilities of my local makerspace. Students like me can go there and use all the fancy tools and machines for free, which came in quite handy. I visited the workshop and talked to the staff about my project, and we came up with an even simpler and cheaper version of my first idea. Instead of using thick plywood as the top board, I went with two layers of thinner MDF sheets. The four individual pieces can be accurately cut with the laser machine and can afterwards be glued together. The outer frames now consist of wooden bars to reduce weight and cheapen the project. Next up was gathering all the required materials, so I went to my local hardware store with those plans in mind. I grabbed 3mm thick, high density fiber boards, some strong beach strips, and some expendable items. Back in the makerspace, I export some SVG files from my 3D model and sent them to the Fusion M2 laser cutter from Epilog. This 60 watt laser machine could easily cut my material with perfect accuracy. Laser cutting the sheets took around 50 minutes and saved me at least one day of repetitive work, so I was very happy about this opportunity. Watching the machine doing its job was satisfying as well. In the end, I was left with those perfectly cut and even sealed edges. To finish my top board, I only had to glue all four parts together. The easiest way to do so was to repurpose a paint roller. It required nearly a whole bottle of wood glue, because the MDF was really thirsty. Next, I took the beech wood strips and cut them roughly to length with a jigsaw. Afterwards, I set the stop at a disc type sander to 30 degrees and sanded each strip down until it had the perfect length and angle. On the laser cutter I also prepared a template, so that I could add three perfectly aligned holes into the beech wood strips. They are required so that the wood wouldn't split when adding screws in the later step. The template helped you quite a lot.
I also grinded such grooves into three wooden bars so I could later add some metal strips across the top board for additional strength. I glued the wooden strips to the underside of my top board and added 18 screws to strengthen the connection. In the end it looked something like this. After the glue up I was not only left with messy sides and top face but also with sharp corners instead of the rounded ones from the top board. So I went back to the disc type sander and sanded them flush. The rest was done manually until I felt a perfectly smooth transition between the beechwood and the MDF. To sand the top face I had to remove all the previously added screws. This sanding became necessary to remove the occurred glue residue on the top face. Next I used some isopropanol and paper towels to remove any dust or other loose particles on the top side of the display body to prepare for painting. I decided to go with non-glossy black paint for the body. This not only accentuates the white ping pong balls which I added later, but also helps reducing the scattered light from one lit nap ball to the other. I applied the color with a paint roller as well, so it would not trip into all the holes. I did not add a base coat beforehand to save some time and I think it was also not necessary for the used black paint. The sides of the hexagon were painted with a normal brush, but the roller should have worked here as well. One sleep later, I had a perfect non-glossy black display body. Completely lost in thoughts, I forgot to add a hole for the cables, which will power all the LEDs in the end. So I had to drill a big hole into the recently painted sides with a forced drill bit. But after this, the woodwork was finally finished. For the LEDs, I went with the so called WS2812B LEDs. Each of them consists of three distinct color diodes for red, green, and blue, and an IC which can interpret an RGB value to light up accordingly. Connected as a strip, those LEDs come in quite handy for colorful light installations. As the distance between two ping pong balls is around 4 cm, I could not go with the standard strip variant. Instead I used the string version where each pair of LEDs is connected by a flexible 12 cm long cable. But they are not available like this in my home country so I bought them for cheap from China. Here you can see how one LED is lit up after the other. Back to the model. I envisioned a simple pattern to make use of the two differently cut wooden top sheets. The hole has the size of the LED chips and the white part of the cross makes room for the cables connecting the LEDs. Each LED is placed according to the schematic and a cut toothpick will hold in place. The ping pong ball is placed on top. So I had to prepare the toothpicks first. Each one was cut into two shorter pieces until I had the required amount. Now I could take one strip and place a single LED into its designated hole. Next I added some hot glue into the groove and dipped the toothpick into it. 
using a screwdriver to hold everything in place until it cooled down and tightened. Now you saw the first one and I only had to repeat this process 330 times more. Oh. In the end, it looked something like this, pretty neat, but it took me like 10 hours or so. The first test showed that every LED was working and everything was connected correctly. The last step in this whole build was adding the ping pong balls to the front side. I bought them for cheap in China as well and their quality was, well, as expected. I hot glued them in place using special ultra clear hot glue to not disturb the light coming from the LEDs underneath. I decided to not cut a hole into the underside of the balls to have two light dispersing layers, one on the underside of the ball and one on the top side. After cluing all the 331 balls, I was finally done with the first part of my build, yeah! So here are the beauty shots, black, white and cables. That's it for this part. I hope you enjoyed it and if you are interested in the electronics of this project, stay tuned for the next episode and consider subscribing. Thanks, bye.